<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Kreutz, and welcome to Halloween DIY and How To. In this edition, I am going to show you how to create this life-sized animated ghost bride. She silently floats in midair, lifting up both her eyes and illuminating candle. Is this ghostly bride searching for something? or someone. <laughs> how is it done? Well, I'm going to show you how, so let's get started. Now, I had no intention of building this prop until this wire dress form was listed for free in my neighborhood. So I jumped at the chance, and I also jumped right into building and filming it, which is not my usual approach for these videos. I nearly always build a prototype before filming to work out all the kinks. Not so with this video, and because of that, this video's format will be a bit different. Here, I will call out the materials as I am building it, and you will see that not all of my ideas work right off the bat. Having said that, let's jump right in. There are three main items that you will need. First, is this unique infant swing with its variable speed control and five different motion options. This is vital in order to create that smooth floating motion. Since there is a 25 pound weight limit for the swing, we will need to stay with lightweight materials. The levitating table prop video goes into more detail about this infant swing, so please reference that video if you need more information on it. Secondly, you will need a life-sized wire dress frame that stands around five feet tall. There are many different styles out there and sites where you can purchase them. The wire construction is important because it keeps the dress form relatively lightweight and it can be easily modified if need be. A footed base is necessary for ease of attaching it to the motorized infant swing. And thirdly, you will need a bridal gown with all the trimmings. I was fortunate enough that I found all of these items at one thrift store. The gown, a long sleeved blouse since the gown was sleeveless, an underslip with adjustable hoop, a complete veil, a white wig, and a lace curtain panel, just in case I should need some additional material. To attach the dress form to the infant swing, first remove the seat belt bracket and the fabric seat. With those removed, use 2 inch to 3 inch hose clamps to attach the feet of the dress form to the now exposed oval frame of the infant seat. Since my dress form base has 3 feet, I was able to hook 2 of the feet onto the seat frame and 1 to the curved support bar with a hose clamp. I could also attach all 3 using hose clamps. If your base has four feet, attach all four to the oval seat frame with the hose clamps. Once firmly attached, adjust the built-in seat positioning mechanism until the dress form is in a fully upright position. I partially dress the form to see how everything fits, placing the blouse on backwards in order to leave the back area open and accessible. I could tell that the upper portion of the dress form would need some reinforcement to keep the fabric of the blouse and the gown from falling into the voids between the wire framing. For the bride's head, I am using a typical styrofoam head found at a hobby store. I can see that the decorative wires at the neck area would need to be removed. However, the two side upright wires will be saved and used later as pivot points. To create the arms, I will use 3 quarter inch PVC pipe covered with foam pipe insulation. I use the length of the blouse's sleeves as a guide for how long to make the arms and where to place the elbow joints. To make the arms joints, I will use short sections cut from this flexible 1 half inch gas appliance pipe. I will secure those pipes to the PVC pipe using 1 inch sheetrock screws. The flexible gas line pipe is easy to bend but firm enough to hold its shape once bent into position. With an overall plan in mind, the gown is removed. The first order of business is to create shoulder sockets and the armature for the rotating axle rod that will animate the arm holding the candle. I use two 2 inch PVC couplers placed at the shoulder location and secured to the wire frame with small wood screws and washers. 
The washer prevents the wood screw from going right through the gap between the wires. There are three of these junction points on each coupler. One in the front, one on top, and one at the back. Next, I create the axle housing, one on each side of the neck, for the one half inch PVC pipe axle. I use a three quarter inch T coupler, a three quarter inch cap, and a short section of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe for each of the two housings. Using just enough pipe to connect the cap to the upright portion of the T-coupler, I glued these pieces together. I then marked on the top of each cap their connection location on the neck and shoulder area of the wire dress frame. Using the same screw and washer method as before, I will attach them to the wire frame at a location that will position the arm's rotating axle rod pretty much in the center of the two shoulder joints. At this point, for both a reference and to avoid confusion, I label both of the shoulder joints to remind me what joints are for which arms as well as what is front and back. On one end of the arm's axle rod, I glue a one half inch end cap and on the other, I use a one half inch coupler that has both a slip end, which will eventually be glued to the other end of the axle rod, and a threaded end. Carefully measure the length of the axle rod so that when the animated arms coupler is glued to it, you will have a slight gap at the two axle housing locations. You need just enough to keep the axle in place, but not too small of a gap that could hinder the free rotation of the axle rod. The threaded end of the coupler will be used to attach the animated arm's upper joint made from the gas flex pipe to the axle. To do this, use a one half inch male gas fitting. The steel union screws onto the threaded end of the one half inch PVC coupler, while the other end screws onto the one half inch fitting on the end of the flex pipe. To keep these threaded joints from unscrewing, use a thread locker gel that will lock them together, but will still be hand tool removable. Attach the upper arm section made of the 3 quarter inch PVC pipe to the gas flex pipe using two 1 inch sheetrock screws. Place the slip end of the PVC coupler onto the end of the PVC axle rod to test how everything works. Remove this arm section and set aside. Do not glue the arm's coupler to the end of the axle rod just yet. Next, I am using some galvanized hanger strap on both the upper back and front of the dress form. On the back, I will be placing two equally spaced strips of the hanger strap vertically, leaving the space in the middle open for access to the inner workings. I am fastening the metal hanger strap to the wire frame by folding it over the wire frame and then using very short screws that are slightly larger than the corresponding small holes of the strap to attach it to itself, much like a rivet. On the front, I'm doing much of the same thing, except with an additional horizontal cross piece of the hanger tape, since the front will be completely closed. Before enclosing it, let's attach the head and also the arm holding the bridal bouquet to the upper torso. I've created the arm that will hold the bouquet using a 3 quarter inch PVC pipe and the 1 half inch flexible gas line pipe. The upper part of the gas line pipe is inserted into a 1 and a half inch by 1 half inch PVC bushing. To keep it from pulling out, crimp the end of the pipe closed and then over at a 90 degree angle. Trim off any of the pipe's end that might be extending past the edge of the bushing before gluing and inserting it into the one and a half inch PVC coupler. This allows for space at the open end of the one and one half inch coupler to fit around the axle end cap without touching or restricting the rotation of the axle. The one and one half inch coupler is placed inside the two inch coupler and one by one, the screws holding the two inch coupler are replaced with slightly longer screws that will also penetrate the one and one half inch coupler, securing the bouquet holding arm to the torso. Pieces of the foam pipe wrap are placed over the PVC pipe and cut at 45 degree angles at the shoulder and elbow. Both the forearm piece of the pipe and the foam are left long. I will address that when it comes time to attach the bouquet. To attach the head to the torso, we need to extend the neck. 
I use this plastic duct reducer for doing that. Using a utility knife, I carefully and evenly reduce the diameter of the styrofoam neck until it fits inside the three inch portion of the reducer. Use a foam friendly glue to glue them together. A gown with a high neckline or adding additional lace at the neckline will help to hide the seam. Next, I paint the head and neck. I will be lighting this prop with a black light and I only want the eyes to glow. So for the head and neck, I use a flat, light army green colored acrylic paint. The eyes are painted with this optic white fluorescent paint. You can see in this example how the flat, light green paint is non-reactive to the UV rays of the black light as compared to the white fluorescent paint. Once the paint is dry, drill two one quarter inch holes on the right and left of the plastic neck, directly across from each other and right before the four inch part of the reducer narrows to the three inch portion. Also note that the styrofoam head probably has a hole in its center. This will come in handy a bit later. With the two remaining upright portions of the wire neck bent downwards and with washers placed on them as spacers, carefully attach the head to the torso by placing these wires into the holes of the reducer. The wires might need to be cut a bit shorter to accomplish this. Once done and working from underneath, use pliers to pull the wires down so that they are both in a more horizontal position. The head should be able to pivot up and down. You may need to adjust the location of the metal tape and its connecting screws at the neck if you need more room for the head to pivot. Next, I'm going to enclose the upper torso, but first I glue some cardboard tube sections cut lengthwise to give the shoulders a more rounded look instead of the wire showing through the gown. I had thought I had a great idea to use this thin foam rubber over the wire armature of the torso. Unfortunately, when I was done, it created so much bulk that the blouse and the gown no longer fit properly. Okay, back to the drawing board. I kept some of the foam and used it on the shoulders, much like shoulder pads, but for the rest of the torso front, I ended up using felt sheets that come with adhesive backing. After cutting and forming them to the contours of the dress form, I then reinforced the seams with white duct tape. Much better. Before placing the blouse back on the dress form, I reinforce its collar with a piece of the hanger strap slid in between the seams. This will help keep the collar shape, making sure that it will not be in the way of the moving head. Since the blouse cannot be put over both arms with them attached, I first slip the blouse over the attached arm. I then slip the other sleeve over the unattached arm that has now been completed in the same manner as the attached arm, using 3 quarter inch PVC pipe, a gas pipe elbow joint, foam pipe wrap cut at 45 degree angles at the elbow and shoulder, and keeping the forearm section long. With that arm's attachment to the axle rod already measured and checked, I can go ahead and carefully glue the two parts together holding the connection together until the glue has set. To help hold the blouse in place, I apply a strip of double-sided foam tape to the top of both shoulders and then place the blouse's corresponding shoulder seam onto the tape. I also take this opportunity to cut off the excess material at the bottom of the blouse. With both arms attached and the blouse in place, I am now ready to finish the workings of the animated arm. First, I will need to add some springs to act as a counterweight to the weight of the extended arm, keeping in mind that that weight will increase once the hand and the battery-operated candle are attached. With that arm in a raised position, I screw two screws, both with a washer and S-hook, into the axle rod. I can then hook one end of the spring to this S-hook and the other end to a S-hook that is attached to the wire form. With the cascading horizontal wires at the back of the form, I can both adjust the tension of the spring by lowering the S-hook to a lower wire and, if need be, swap out a stronger spring or springs. Well, that's the theory. I need to attach the hand and candle first and put it all to the test. With that said, let's turn our attention to the construction of the hand that holds the candle. I am using this styrofoam hand and forearm that I purchased last season at a hobby store. It is the left hand, so that predetermined that it would be the left arm that would be animated. 
I cleaned up the seams of the hand a bit with a utility knife. I also used the knife to shape the area between the thumb and pointer finger to accommodate the candle. After adding fake fingernails, I then painted the hand with the same flat, light green paint that I used on the head. I slipped the candle into position just to double check how it fits. Although it is a tight fit and the candle is secure in the hand's grasp, I will eventually add a bit of coat hanger wire that will extend to the underneath of the candle, just for added security. Unfortunately, the hand position as it is now connected to the forearm is not correct, so I will carefully cut the hand off of the forearm, making sure to leave a bit of wrist. This will give me space to add a piece of the flexible gas line pipe, allowing me to adjust the position of the hand in relation to its new arm. I carefully hollowed out the wrist area of just enough styrofoam to accept a 3 quarter inch PVC coupler. Not wanting to destroy the integrity and strength of the styrofoam in that area, I was careful not to remove too much. After applying a generous amount of white glue to the outside of the coupler, I slid it into place. Once the glue is dried, I attached the gas tubing to the coupler with a sheetrock screw that penetrated both the coupler and the flexible tubing. I could have come from the palm side to do this, but my reasoning was that the extra thick white glue used to glue the foam plug into place would actually reinforce that area. Once that was dried, I sculpted the plug with a utility knife, then sanded it to match the rest of the hand. As with the other arm, the forearm portion of this arm was left long, both the PVC pipe as well as the foam. I wired the cup of the sleeve, holding it into place on the forearm, and then cut away the excess foam and pipe just below the edge of the cuff. Now, sometimes there are happy accidents. I had fully intended to screw the hand's flex pipe to the inside of the arm's pipe, creating a solid connection. However, when I slid the hand's flex pipe into the arm pipe and moved the arm, I found that the batteries in the bottom of the candle acted as a ballast. As I moved the arm, the candle and hand moved also, keeping the candle more upright than a solid connection would allow. With this additional weight added to the arm, I found that the springs did little, if anything, to counter that weight. The answer was to give them more of a leverage point by moving their connection to the axle rod further away from the center of the rod. To do this, I used three inch deck screws. The small washer and S-hook were held in place at the end of the screw by slipping a 2-inch piece of vinyl tubing over the screw. It is important that you have enough length at the screw's tip to not only go into the PVC pipe, but also just barely all the way through it. Once the 3-inch long screws replaced the flush ones and the springs were reattached, this did give the springs the leverage they needed. Now the springs don't fully lift the arm, they just take the weight off, making it effortless to lift it. With those adjusted, I now need to add the connection point to the middle of the axle rod. I am using one more of the 3 inch deck screws, assembled like the other two, to also give it some leverage. I place it a bit further back on the axle rod and pre-drill its hole with a drill bit smaller than the screw. This will help to ensure that the PVC pipe does not crack when screwing in the 3 inch screw. Using nylon cording, since cotton cording will stretch, I tie one end to the S hook and run the other end down the inside of the dress form to the infant swing below. Turn on the swing and stop it at its highest position. Tie the other end of the arm string to an I hook screwed into one of the holes of the speaker. Pull on the string until the arm and the candle are at the highest desired level. Then loosely knot the string to the eye hook. I turn back on the swing at its lowest speed and on any of the motions and check the motion of the arm. At this point, you can adjust the arm's position by retying the string longer or shorter. Now onto the head. To keep the head's natural position to be facing down, I glued a piece of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe into its already existing hole, making sure that the pipe does not extend down too far to where it would interfere with the workings of the arm. I attached a spring to the bottom front of the pipe and then attached the other end of the spring to one of the holes in the hanger strap. 
After drilling a hole at the bottom back of the plastic reducer, attach one end of the nylon cord to it. Then follow the same procedure as the animated arm, except attach its eye hook to the speaker on the other side of the swing's base. Turn on the swing, adjust the movement of the head by lengthening or shortening the string at the eye hook. Now let's turn our attention to the other arm, the one that holds the bouquet. The bouquet is made of three items, a prearranged bouquet of faux flowers, an additional stem of artificial flowers and buds bent down so it is trailing, and a pre-made plastic bouquet holder with lace that I found in the bridal section of a hobby store. After removing the plastic hand grip from its bottom, I fed the stems of the artificial flowers through that hole. Since the forearm was left long, cut the foam pipe insulation back to the cuff's edge. Drill a one half inch hole facing forward and slightly upwards into the three quarter inch PVC pipe. Cut off the excess pipe, leaving about two to three inches of the pipe extending beyond the cuff. Thread the stem ends of the flower bouquet through the hole in the pipe. Wrapping the stem ends together tightly with a piece of tape will help. Use a zip tie around the protruding stem ends to secure the bouquet to the arm. After cutting off the excess stem ends, position the bridal bouquet. To simplify this build, omit the animated arm and build both the right and the left arms as bouquet holding arms. The build is simplified even further since the placement of the bridal bouquet and its size eliminates any need to create hands. The bridal gown needed a bit more length to help it hang over the seat frame of the infant seat. That was easily accomplished by hot gluing some additional lace to either the gown or the undergarment. To help hide the infant swing, hot glue black material around the perimeter of the seat frame, having it hang down over the swing space. Additionally, you can place black material around the base of the swing, keeping it away from any moving parts. Painting the base with flat black spray paint is also a good option. Just make sure that you mask off the area with the controls and the screen. If you will be using the prop outside, keep in mind that it is a bit top heavy and a gust of wind can easily topple it. To avoid this, place the base on a firm, flat, and level surface. Placing it on a piece of plywood will also help, and in my case, I use theatrical sandbags placed on the base but away from the moving parts to help stabilize it. I can then hide the reinforced base with a piece of black material. After adding the wig, veil, and perhaps even a string of pearls, your animated ghost bride is now ready to take up residence in your Halloween haunt.